Welcome to the Linux Gaming Talk. So if you don't uh, like the preview screen, I think everybody kind of got a kick out of it. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, so anyways, let's get things going here. So again, you have come to Linux Gaming, the Dark Ages, today and beyond. If you didn't mean to do it, now is your chance to run away. Plug. What's that? Plug. Plug? Okay, fantastic. So, <laughs> all right, nobody ran away. What's that? There's actually a meaning to that. I believe it. I believe you. <laughs> so it looks like people are still filing in, so that's awesome. We'll give them another minute or two here. If you hear banging out there, it's not from me, I swear. Sorry. Yes, sir. I saw a Ubuntu 1904 um, presentation. He had um, Battle.net icon on his desktop. He had a Battle.net icon on his desktop? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. It's kind of awesome, yeah. if I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. There's going to be a lot of interesting things here, so you'll get a kick out of it. Okay, so I'm going to start getting moving forward. It sounds like most of the banging is done. Most of the people are done going in and out. Hi, Romeo. How are you? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just tormenting people I now know throughout the conference and whatnot. <laughs> Welcome. It's okay. It's the door. It's not you. I promise. It's been that way since we started the conference. Come on in. Grab a seat. All is well. All the people live streaming this right now are probably like, oh, my God, this guy won't start. Why? I'm just kidding. everybody to be real comfy. Everything will be good. I only, I only look marginally buffoonal. Welcome. Come on in. Grab a seat. Fantastic. I should have sent a tweet up before all my talks. Dear God. The turnout's fantastic. All right. Good. I love that door. That door's fantastic. I promise it wasn't me. I know it's not you. You probably can't fix it. Actually, speaking of which, I don't know where that guy teleported to. He's just like, you're ready to go? Okay, hit the button. And then it was just like, hey, that's messed up. Hit it. <laughs> Gone. So we're just going to call that guy Bob. Bob, wherever you are, if you can fix this, that'd be great. He probably saw it and was like, I don't feel like fixing that. Yeah, I was going to say, he's looking up here and he's just like, oh, my God, the presentation's not centered. All I'm saying is Lunduke didn't have these problems. That's all I'm saying. Wherever James Mason is, he's probably throwing things at the screen right now, but... I think they were like that yesterday. I, I, I think they were. I'm pretty sure they were still. I gotta give James a hard time, that's all. It's good practice not to make your margins too tight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sweet. Alright, so I think we're mostly good. I am gonna stop riffing here in a second. Alright, so Linux Gaming, the Dark Ages today and beyond. Uh, so let's talk about me, because I'm narcissistic and I'm a speaker here. So. Uh, I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? Anyways, so I'm a senior infrastructure engineer of, oh yeah, <clears throat> forget the bullet points, because, mm, projector, uh, of the 777th degree. If you get that reference, you like Disney movies and so do I, we're buddies. Um, bachelor's degree from a meaningless university because it's a pizza parchment, that's about it. Um, master's degree from Hard Knocks University because life can suck, we all get helmets, that's kind of how that works. Uh, and a PhD in yak shaving. Does anyone get the yak shaving reference? Okay, so I'm gonna pick one of you. Okay, so so everybody doesn't attack me at the same time. What's the reference? Uh, it's uh, well, it's just a term that at least I've heard. It's about um, like talking about stuff that's uh, like unimportant. <sighs> so close. You know what you have to do in order to do what you want to do, and the term is from Ren and Stimpy. <gasps> See, I like him. See, he got the Ren and Stippy reference. So that's bonus points. You're not wrong. Um, but yeah, it's an old Ren and Stippy reference. Um, basically, before I learned how to automate things in my career, I got really, really, really good at doing the same thing over and over and over again, much like shaving a yak. That's basically what that boils down to. Um, but I love asking that question because I get so many different answers. It's kind of fun. Okay, so <clears throat> this is Solus 4, and it is a screenshot of Shannon's desktop from home. This has nothing to do with this talk, but I'm going to get punched in the balls the entire five-plus airplane hour ride home because I forgot to put it in my talk yesterday. So this is so you all get to see this so I don't die on my way home. Anyways, moving on. Okay, so <clears throat> now for something completely different. Super Mario Brothers. 
on the Nintendo Entertainment System, on the NES, who here, show of hands, had an NES? Okay, for all of you who can't see that on the camera, it's basically the room, because they're all good people. Um, and of, okay, so of those people who had the NES and played Super Mario Brothers, um, does anybody remember the format that that came on? What did we call those delightful gray discs? Cartridges, right? Okay, so we all had cartridges, we all played Super Mario Brothers. When I was three years old, uh, I played Super Mario Brothers, and because I was a tiny fat kid, uh, they took me to a local McDonald's, and there was actually, it was my first video game tournament at three years old. And they said, do you want a Happy Meal? And I said, yeah. And they're like, cool, go play Super Mario Brothers. Cool, all right. So apparently I won and got a free Happy Meal. I don't know, but apparently that's how my gaming life started. Um, completely ridiculous sentiment, I know. <clears throat> what is this game? Okay. Who here played Duck Hunt when they were little? Fantastic. What's that? Okay, okay, not, okay, fine. Not little when we were all younger forms of ourselves. Um, we played Duck Hunt, right? Okay. Um, so interesting note. Uh, did you know, and some of you probably will if you're in this talk, did you know that you actually can't play the original Duck Hunt today on current modern TVs? Okay, so everybody knows that. Do you guys know there's actually active projects to mod those old things to actually fix it? So you can play it on flat screens? You guys did come to the right talk. I'm so happy. You have no idea how often I tell that story and people are like, we don't know, we don't really care. Why is it orange? But like, actually, it was gray. That was the second one, but anyways. Um, so anyways, cool. So we all remember that. So, But that's kind of sad, right? Like, I mean, I would love to share that with, like, you know, my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, right? I, I would love to be able to play that today. Kind of a bummer, right? But back then, it was no problem. And it had to do with the refraction of the, the uh, vacuum tube and the CRTs. For anybody who doesn't know, I don't want to assume everybody knows, but that's why. Oh, that's not why. Tell me why, sir. Because uh, CRT, you have the electron beam mm -hmm. sweeping down and paint, repainting the tube uh, at least 60 times a second, frequently more. See, there you go. This is why I'm happy all of the gray beards come here because they keep me honest. Um, and I got it half right. So you pull the trigger, the screen goes white. The detector at the front of the gun can detect where on the, where on the screen it is by when that flash comes in. Mm -hmm. And so it knows where it's pointing. Uh, an LCD does not have this sweep. When the screen goes white, it doesn't know where the electron beam is. So this is why, uh, why the Wii, when it came out, had this stuff that you put on the monitor so it would know where you're pointing. Because uh, CRTs have been a thing for some time. Mm -hmm. You couldn't say, oh, well, sorry, you have to buy a CRT. That's not going to fly. <laughs> Will these be coming to the late Pacer for Sega, Sega Master System? What's that? I'm sorry? Will One more time. be coming to Sega Master System? Great question. I hope so. That'd be great. And you have the power voice? I'm following the main project, and they're working on something like that. And as of two years ago, it was actually working. So, so there you go. It shouldn't be that hard to port it to NES emulators or Sega emulators. In fact, it's probably working now. Mm -hmm. For the record, so you all know, yeah, I'm going to buy that guy a beer and lunch later, and uh, I promise we'll uh, do that transaction later, sir, because I promise I didn't actually pay you to come today. But no, but thank you so much. I got some more fun things to talk about. I'll let you stumble across them. Okay, sounds good. Yes, sir, in the uh, far back there, yes. Uh, I did see recently a YouTube video where there was a guy that uh, modified this to work with an LCD using, like, I think it was either a Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool projects that are actually working on this right now. And like we were just pointing out, yeah, I mean, some of them are actually working, uh, which is kind of fantastic. So point being, though, is, is that, yeah, I mean, we all kind of miss that, right? I mean, and people care enough to actually create projects and mods and things around it so we can kind of recapture a little bit of our childhood, right? Kind of cool. So does anybody know what this is? If you can see, or if you're really close, you'll be able to tell real quick, but... Mini Ag Mansion. Okay, so what's that? Right, absolutely. So you know, yeah, just scum VM, you know, or scum from back then, right? I mean, it's 
I mean, it's awesome. It was really cool. This was one of the first games I ever launched, uh, you know, basically uh, from, I think we had, God, what did we have then? Did we have a 46 then? Um, but I felt like a ninja when I started this game. It was fantastic. It was so cool. Um, what else we got? Full Throttle. Who here played Full Throttle? Yes. All good people played Full Throttle. Exactly. Um, it was fantastic. It was basically almost like a point-and-click like uh, game. It was fantastic, though. It was so much fun. Um, what's that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it was just utterly great. Um, I still, I still have the box and the working uh, game at home. I have lots of games still just hanging out. Shannon will tell you she probably wants to choke me with some of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, still have them, right? So that was back when we could buy media um, and actually keep it. Yes, sir. You can. Yeah, you can, you can get it on Steam now. Or is it remastered? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, if you, if you hate DRM, go GOG. Um, for sure. Um, Doom! Everybody played Doom. Who didn't play Doom? Come on. Right? Okay, you don't count in the corner and you work here. No, I'm just kidding. That's okay. So most people played Doom, or at least a lot of people, right? Um, it was really cool. It was really tiny. Brian Lundig likes to say how, you know, Modern web pages are actually larger than the original Doom was, right? I mean, which is, which is actually a true statement these days, uh, depending on the website. So, but everybody played this. I mean, you know, I mean, if you ask me today, what was the um, sequence for God mode? Quick, everybody yell it out. IDDQ. Thank you. Okay. And for all guns, uh, unlimited ammo, and all keys, it was uh, IDKFA. Um, you know, so, God, that's sad that I remember that all these years later, but... Clearly, this made an impression on my life, right? Okay. So, gaming on Linux, when most of those games were around, was really, really, really hard uh, at a high level, right? So, we're not going to dig into the weeds. We're not going to go into all of the things that we had to do to get things to work back then. But suffice to say, at a, at, it was very, very difficult to play games back then, certainly as we knew them then, and certainly as we would know them today, right? Um, it was tough back then. So... You know, if you had a Broadcom wireless driver, as I have up on the screen right now, working out of the box, plugging in a hardwire connection so that you could download the Broadcom blob, so that you could get Wi-Fi on your laptop, was a thing, right, in that general time frame. Um, and it was one of the big barriers to entry for me back when I started my life in Linux, right? Like I'm sitting there, I'm like, I just want my laptop to work. I just want to do the thing. I want my laptop to be a laptop not a desktop. That's the whole reason I have it. But it was a huge pain in the butt, um, at least initially. Um, it got easier, um, and today it's something that a lot of people take for granted, right? Because we generally don't have that problem anymore. Um, so that's kind of gaming in the old sense, right? We were talking cartridges, we were talking uh, light guns, we were talking NES, we were talking Doom, you know, uh, Scum. We were talking all kinds of retro stuff, right? So what about Linux gaming today? Right? <clears throat> Obviously, it's a very different story today. Hey, still Doom, but it's Doom 2016. Wow, that looks different, right? Um, kind of fantastic. Um, so Doom 2016. So, you know, uh, has Vulkan support, you know, now worked with ProtonDB and all, all kinds of other stuff. We're going to get into that a little bit more. But we have a lot of layers and things that were working even before the advent of Proton, right? That we could play things in an easier fashion. We had things like Lutris, we had things like GOG, we have Steam, we have all kinds of things that once upon a time wouldn't have been a thing, even when those various products existed, at least not initially, right? So we've come a really long way on gaming on Linux from way back when, right? Um, Overwatch. Here's something we never thought we'd actually be able to play on Linux, let's be honest here. Um, matter of fact, uh, I worked with a gentleman a couple years ago and his running joke with me was, he's like, the day that I can play Overwatch on Linux, regardless of what I have to do, is the day that I throw away Windows. The day that that happened, I may or may not have called him and laughed and then found out he was playing it. But the point is, <laughs> but the point is, is that gaming has always been one of the largest barriers to entry for Linux for a lot of people, right? It's one of the things that, at least in my opinion, um, has kept it from a very mass audience of the average person, in my opinion. And I'm sure some people will fight me on that, but 
Um, that would be my two cents. So we have things now like Proton um, and the advent of such things like that. DXVK, Wine, all of those other things that were either stop gaps or now complements to things like Proton and things of the like powering the nuts and bolts of us being able to game on Linux, right? Um, and I know there's some back and forth about whether or not we think that this is going to um, stimulate gaming on Linux or if it's actually going to detract from native gaming on Linux. Personally, I think it's going to be a compliment and I think it's gonna bring more eyeballs and people to Linux than ever before. Um, and I think that's only going to bring more momentum to Linux as a desktop so that we can start moving forward and actually be taken more seriously as a platform. That's my stance on it at least. And I'm sure some people will want to shoot me in the face with a shotgun for that, but that is my stance. Um, you know, and you look at the actual amount of games that work here. We have, I mean, in this, I, I took the screenshot this week. It was just over 4,500. I mean, that's kind of fantastic, right? I mean, we went from a couple thousand not that long ago to we've gained almost 2,000, I think, from when I started paying attention, um, which is to say that was semi-recently. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of great. You know, and you have sites like this that will actually go through and show you what's working, what's not. What can I go play and not be miserable, right? You know, <laughs> wonderful people doing God's work, making sure that all of us don't have to think hard about what we're doing to go play a game. Because that's what we actually wanted to do, right? We didn't want to necessarily fix 57 things. We wanted to go play a game. We wanted to go have fun. Back when you could pop in a cartridge or, you know, call your, you know, your buddy over and have a great time, right? That's what we want to do. So, okay. So we've talked a little bit about, um, so we've talked a little bit about um, yesterday, today. I was horrified that everything stopped recording. If everyone's wondering what the heck I was doing on my phone, um, my, uh, my my face was about to melt. Um, but uh, just to uh, again hammer this point home, um, this is actually a screenshot from that same page on Proton DB. This is what I could get to fit of you know some fairly recent fairly large games, um, and again, people will fight me based on what's up here a little bit, um, that you can go play. That's kind of fantastic. Again, back when I was growing up, which wasn't that long ago, um, this would not have been a thing, right? Whether it was the games of the day or not. That's kind of fantastic. Um, we're kind of in a little bit of a renaissance for gaming on Linux, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of great. Um, it's a great time to be gaming on Linux. Now, I will absolutely get punched if I don't mention Lutris. Lutris is fantastic. Um, I, uh, Shannon and I, uh, one of the first games that we played on Linux was League of Legends. So you can all now judge me um, <clears throat> for various reasons. Uh, but, you know, I was able to use Lutris to set things up for her and I, and we could go play a game. That's kind of fantastic. And I didn't spend a month doing it. Right? Wonderful people were setting things up, um, taking care of making the scripts, doing QA, and we had a platform that it could be shared on. How awesome is that? Right? I mean, that's fantastic. That didn't exist when I was little. Um, it's kind of great. And it's only getting better. And it's only a compliment to all the things we've talked about so far, um, which is just fantastic. So, okay. So we talked about the past. We've talked a little bit about today and kind of what's going on right now, right? So what about the future, right? And it's a great question because I wrote it and said it was a great question. So, so okay, this is where things start getting a little controversial. Um, so Google Stadia, gaming via the internet, and maybe the data center on the back end, right? Uh, maybe instead uh, subscribing to Shadow's monthly service. If you don't know what Shadow is, don't worry, I'll tell you a little bit about it in a minute. Um, some people know it, some people are like, what the heck is Shadow? Um, so, here's the thing. Here is kind of a short list of things that concern me about Google Stadia. Um, because you got the marketing song and dance from Google, that's all great, but here's some, a little bit of reality in my opinion. So, your controller is connecting to the session um, in the Google Data Center. So, I mean, 
lag, lots of lag, more lag, and lag. Um, even if you have a gigabit, or you know, assuming that you don't have a gigabit connection for a moment, let's say you're a normal, you know, peasant like I am, and I have maybe a hundred meg connection, and I know there are people that have significantly less than that, depending on where you are. Um, part of the reason is because of the ISP duopoly for the most part, and a few other reasons, right? But point is, the average person doesn't have a gigabit connection. Some lucky few do. That's going to hurt adoption, right? And if my controller is now, uh, you know, dealing with uh, input back and forth from this session, there's going to be a huge amount of latency. And Google doesn't control all of it, so that's kind of a big deal to me. So good luck playing competitive games, in my opinion, until they prove me wrong. Um, you know, same thing about the internet connection. Um, you know, how long until Google kills the service? I mean, you know, it might be five minutes. Maybe, <laughs> I mean, it might be a month. I don't know. Um, for that matter, I don't think they know. Um, you know, what happens to all of those games that you would buy through Stadia? What happens? Because to my knowledge, I don't think they're actually integrating into all the things that you're already using, right? So where's it go? What happens? Is it going to be like all those great movies that you know you downloaded via their service? Probably the same thing that happened on live. Right. Exactly. Just like you said, poof. Right. So. So I mean, not not a not a good look, right? Um, so it could be cool. So what is Shadow? So Shadow has a couple different bits. Um, Linus Tech Tips Tech Tips actually covered this a few months ago. If you haven't seen it, it's worth watching. Um, but basically, they're putting in a little ARM-based thin client in your home. Uh, in their data centers, they have, so that's where you're connecting up, right? Um, and they basically have a tuned version of KVM in their data centers. So again, your, your, your giant racks of servers and data centers, right? Um, each of the units that you have that you plugged into, you're getting a dedicated 1080 or Quadro P5000. So it's kind of neat, you're getting dedicated hardware, so it's not being shared per se, right? You're just getting it. Um, excuse me. They claim on their website you'll get 1080p at 144 hertz or 4K at 60 frames a second, um, and they're claiming nearly bare metal performance. So we'll see. Um, so if you pay a year in advance, it's just under 30 bucks. If you go month to month, it's 35 bucks. Um, so what else about it? So basically, what they're doing. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So they recommend a hardwired connection. They recommend at least 5 gigahertz on the Wi-Fi. Things of like 2.4 is going to be too chatty and garbage. It's just not going to work. Actually, for the point I made earlier about latency, they already know it's going to be garbage. So they also claim you can get away with a 15 megabit a second connection. That would be really, really interesting, but I really, really, really am skeptical of that statement because I think that's going to be lies. Um, so there is an 1804, uh, an Ubuntu 1804 client in beta, which is kind of cool. Uh, it works on Android 7 or later mobile devices. That includes Android TVs. Uh, and you're able to download your games basically to this exciting shadow machine that you are, in essence, logged into, right? To uh, basically download Steam, Origin, Epic Game Store, GOG, all the games that you have. What interests me a little bit more about this service is I'm keeping what's mine, huge air quotes, because <laughs> these services is not really mine anymore, right? Like we were talking about earlier, it's not like I can take my cartridge and go home. Um, but it's still tied to those accounts, but I can now download them and do the thing. They also have a gigabit connection to those um, uh, shadow machines that you have, so downloading it is not going to be that big of a deal, depending on what we're talking about. So I put any questions here because <laughs> at the tail end, not just because we're getting towards the end of things, but obviously... Gaming in the data center and gaming around um, things like that are a very, very interesting proposition, right? Um, Shadow's taking the approach that everything from that little box that you buy, right, or that you're renting from them, to their data center, to all of their networking gear is optimized for um, latency, right? It's optimized to reduce every step of the chain they possibly can um, to make your life not suck when you're gaming. Now, it's really going to be interesting to see how both of those kind of shake out, right? Because if you went to somebody and said, hey, I can give you almost an identical performance experience gaming for 35 bucks a month, 
instead of you going out and building a machine for 12 or 1500 for comparable performance, that's kind of a really interesting conversation, right? Um, so where I am with this is skeptical, right? But I think it's really, really interesting because people were skeptical about a lot of the other advents on Linux and gaming up till now, especially Proton, right? Proton is very controversial for lots of reasons. So that's still being sorted. None of us know the future. I am not Miss Cleo. You can call me now, but I'm not gonna be able to tell you anything, right? So that said though, I think it's a really interesting discussion to have. Um, shadow, shadow sounds like um, mm -hmm. a remote desktop thin client, which is another term for kind of like ABM. Mm hmm Yeah, I mean, it's and, that. And input back. Yeah, absolutely. But, yes, sir, you have a question. I have a comment. Okay. Um, Love comments. So at $35 a month, $1,500 turns out to be less than four years. Correct. Well, and, and, so, well, and, and, and you're how right. How often do you refresh your gaming equipment? Well, uh, exactly, right? So, so my understanding is that... Um, with that monthly or that yearly um, purchase that you're making, um, they are committing to you to upgrade their stack in the data center as well. So that is going to get upgraded along with your subscription over time. But going back to the comment you made, that's a valid point, right? It's how, how long would I be able to have this subscription for, you know, before it equals that gaming rig I could have bought, Four right? Years. Four years, right. So, 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 I mean, that's the answer to the question. Um, not to mention, don't forget, you know, various services you might be subscribing to and various other overhead, right? So those are all important things to keep in mind when you're having that discussion, right? Um, what other questions? Any idea what the latency on Shadow is like? So when, when they were down in walking through their actual facility, um, they actually have latency testers that Shadow actually hand-built. Uh, and software to measure that. Uh, and when they installed it on uh, Linus's machine and a few other things, now obviously these were fairly ideal conditions, um, it was 91 milliseconds um, both ways. So that's actually not that awful if you consider it. Now granted, that's also sitting in their offices in an ideal location, probably with a gigabit connection. So take that for what it's worth. Um, yes, sir? That's actually on the verge of human recognizable. 200 milliseconds is yep. you see human recognizable latency. Yeah, I mean, I mean, absolutely right. So again, all these things need to be bore out by actual, uh, I'll call it empirical research, right? Um, so I think we have a question over here. Hold tight one second. I think poor Shannon is now diving through rooms and doors to come to you so we can hear the awesome question you were about to ask me. Yes. I know that at one point it was either required or strongly recommended in some cases to use proprietary drivers to be able to do so. Uh, I did install the NVIDIA drivers on my machine. I tried like one or two games and it works, but I did not want to put up with that. So I removed the drivers and haven't dealt with it since. Has that changed in any way? Can you use the free drivers and get reasonably good performance out of it? Or Great question. I haven't personally messed with the actual uh, open drivers uh, much recently, at least. Um, so I honestly don't know 100% as of this moment. Um, I do know that um, in a broader sense, I know that AMD is and NVIDIA are both putting uh, more weight behind some of the open source things, more AMD than NVIDIA, um, to try and get the performance where it needs to be um, to match that. Um, but unfortunately, I honestly don't know. I haven't messed with it too much recently. Sorry. I mean, anecdotally, I had a game that I tried, and mm -hmm. actually I got it running better on Linux than I did on Windows, and I went back to Windows and speed tuned it and got it going that fast. So as far as that goes, like, I think it's there, just I have really bad experiences with proprietary layers in the past and just don't want to deal with it for the most part. So if right. I can avoid that, I yeah, you'd like to. Sense. Yeah. So that's what keeping me tied, oddly enough, is drivers. Like yeah. The, yeah, I know. Well, I was going to say, and I mean, and I mean, there are definitely ways around that. And, you know, I mean, also too, I mean, even to speak to the configuration bits, you know, I mean, if you, if you install a distro like, you know, Pop! OS that just has the NVIDIA drivers baked in or a Solus or something of the like, since I was joking about Solus a little bit earlier, um, 
but they both would give you pretty much out of the box experiences with stuff like that, which would be kind of great. And I know Pop OS also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they also include all of the uh, 32 bit uh, Vulcan drivers and things like that out of the box. So they deal with a lot of the overhead and the potential headache you might run into depending on the distro you run. Um, so pros and cons, um, at least from a setup and configuration standpoint. Um, great question. There. Anybody else? Questions? Thoughts, feelings, emotions? Want to throw things at me? How does the performance compare with Sega Channel? <laughs> yeah, <I was> just, <laughs> now I'm just being trolled. You know what, though? I still love you because you, you have an NES controller on your hat. You can do no wrong in this talk. So we're already buddies. Um, sorry, there, there was another question, I think. So, so I mean, if you if if you count Steam, um, I, I if I'm not mistaken, I think that they um, actually have uh, the lead or one of the leads on that actually being paid by them that more or less developed it, um, and then they released it as well, obviously. But but uh, or Valve actually, excuse me. Um, see, this is why this is why you're all here. You're here to make sure I'm not a complete wandering buffoon. Um, Code Weavers as well. I'm sorry. Code Weavers. Code Weavers as well. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the short answer is it is not just some uh, necessarily disparate, you know, uh, I'll call it a fly-by-night project, even though, again, I'm going to get tomatoed for that. But, uh, yes, there is some sufficient <laughs> – thank you. The one guy over here throwing the tomato. That was good. Um, yeah, so uh, there is significant backing. I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Um, I only see that going up and to the right, at least for the foreseeable future, uh, would be my thought. So – any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned Pop OS. Is there a particular distro that would be designed for games, especially? So, uh, so Pop OS is really good uh, from the standpoint of a lot of the drivers and a lot of the headache is taken out of it. When you actually download um, that particular distro, you can pick uh, if you have an NVIDIA or um, Intel AMD um, bits. Um, so, if you would install, say, the NVIDIA flavor, the NVIDIA proprietary driver is already installed. You have all of the drivers, things like that. So there's a lot of niceties you get with things like that. Same thing with um, Solus 4. Um, it comes pretty much with the NVIDIA drivers um, out of the box, trying to make your life less miserable, if at all humanly possible. Um, I'm pretty sure Valve also puts out their own like, distro with SteamOS or something like that. Yeah, Valve also has SteamOS. For however long they keep it up. I, I, I was going to say, I'm... I, I was going to say, I'm not going to, um, I am not going to sling mud at SteamOS, but I will also say that is not necessarily the first thing I would recommend people to run games on on Linux either. Um, but yes, it still exists. Um, I'll be very, I think it'll be very interesting over the next couple years, especially now with Proton in the game and a few other things, um, if that receives any type of TLC or refresh. That might actually be a compelling, interesting conversation, I would think. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I don't think they're selling them at least. They open source the um, software so you can actually flash it onto a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. They did a fire sale like last year sometime. I got yeah. one from Fowler. Yep. Um, Steam directly. Right. So, any other questions? Do you know if Shadow is available in Washington? Do I know if it is? No, it's not. I was gonna say. I don't. I don't believe that it is. Um, at least not yet. No. Um, yes, sir. In the back. You didn't mention the earliest. Of <laughs> so, so Zork. I did mention Zork in the description. Okay. So, uh, has everyone here, or does everyone here know what a text-based adventure is? Okay. So, at least I don't have to explain it. So, everybody's at least seen Zork. Okay, good. Now, um, yeah, Zork was, um, so, so Zork's a little bit of an inside joke because um, uh, it was actually the first text-based adventure that my dad actually showed me um, way back when. So that's part of the reason I threw that in there is a little bit of an homage and a nod. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, whenever, uh, what was it? Uh, I think it was Return to Zork, uh, when it became almost like a point-and-click FMV, um, almost, um, was one of the first, uh, was one of the first uh, real experiences I got with Zork beyond text-based adventures and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. So we have a lot of the emulations like Proton and stuff so you can run Windows games on Linux. Mm -hmm. At what point do you think it may switch the game developers are like, well, everybody's running it on Proton and Linux better when we just make a native Linux game? Uh, do you think that will ever happen? Do you think that's a thing? Unclear, but I hope. 
Um, I, I would love to sit here and be like, oh, absolutely. You know, in the next three to five years, that'll absolutely happen. And here's all the, you know, uh, statistics I have to prove that. I don't, but I really hope that that continues that momentum, moves in that direction. And I really hope that, you know, studios like Pharaoh and other folks that, you know, make some amazing, awesome, you know, games on Linux will continue to do so. Um, but yeah, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so Lutris is really neat, and one of the things I actually like about Lutris is that um, not only can you go to their site and a lot of the install scripts and things of the like are kind of categorized and um, in a library for you, which is really cool, but one of the other neat things you can do is you can actually go in and pick um, the version of Wine that's running with the particular game that you're running which is kind of sweet. So if I know there's a particular version of wine that's really rocking for like League of Legends or something like that, for example, um, I can pick that for that particular game, but then I can change that for insert other game here, um, which is kind of neat. So it takes some of the hassle and the legwork out of that and makes it a lot more of a more point and click exercise. Um, so that might be something for you to actually take a peek at. That's fair. That's fair. I completely understand. Yes, sir. What's your, native, your favorite native Linux game? Favorite native Linux game. Oh, God. That's like picking my children a little bit. Like, I mean, to be fair, right? Um, good question. I don't... <laughs> did, I, did someone just say Super Tux Racer? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Super Tux Racer. No, um... <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, that would be like picking my children. That's like saying pick a favorite Ninja Turtle. I, I can't do that. That's, the no. Yeah, the green one. Yeah, <laughs> the green one. Uh, any other questions? No, really? Have I finally tuckered you all out? Yes, sir, in the back. Final, final follow up. The yes. I mentioned the uh, uh, text adventures is because I maintain a engine for running the old Infocom games. Oh, you do? Linux. Okay. Mm -hmm. uploaded the source code to all the old Infocom games to GitHub. No kidding. So this past Friday, there was a shindig at uh, GitHub mm -hmm. with uh, some of the old implementers, including Steve Bretsky, saying, OK, look at all this. Isn't this wonderful? Huh. That's pretty awesome. That, that definitely makes sense why, whenever you mention text-based games, that it, it all kind of jives and makes that make yeah. much more sense so, now. If any of you want to play the old uh, Infocom That's awesome. And that's, uh, you can get the old Infocom games uh, elsewhere. Just ask around, look around. Does that include Hitchhiker's Guide? Yes. Wow. So what's that again? That's kind of awesome. ifarchive.org. if-archive. So if-archive.org and uh, installing Frots, you said? Frots. F-R-O-T-Z. F-R-O-T-Z. Do those two things, and we get all the uh, old Infocom goodness and beyond. You'll have to look for the Infocom games. But, okay. Uh, the IF archive has the stuff that's been uh, written since the demise of Infocom. Okay. That's awesome. See, even I got something out of this talk today. I know that uh, utterly shocks all of you, but you that's awesome. Games too. That'd, that'd be fantastic. But that's why it's called interactive fiction. It's like playing a book. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, any other questions? Do you know any yes. Studios that develop on Linux and Porsche Windows and Mac instead of the other way around? No. I was going to say, not that I'm aware of. At least, at least not off the top of my head, at least. I'll ask you again next year. So. Yeah, I was going to say, ask, <laughs> ask me next year. Hopefully, hopefully the answer is at least two studios. That'd be great. And then when I'm wrong, you can all point and laugh at me. Um, 
I'm sorry? Remember Crack.com? Crack.com? They, uh, they were one of the first uh, Linux-only uh, game studios. Oh, OK. They started with Linux and ported to Windows. I'm not sure how far they got with that. But mm -hmm. they put out some interesting stuff. OK. That's awesome. No, I, I'm, uh, I'm actually not familiar with that. I'm, I'm getting the most out of this talk, I feel like. Um, yep. uh, any final questions? All right, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.